In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take one of these inexpensive wireless doorbells, which can be purchased on eBay for around $6 shipped, and convert it into a really nice remote control, which you can use for triggering circuits. Now I'm going to show you two ways that can be done. Now the first way is when you push and hold the button, what will happen, you will be able to turn a circuit on. It could be 110, it could be a DC circuit. As long as that button's being held, the circuit will be on. The other way is going to be a latching circuit. When you push the button once and let go, the circuit will latch on a 120 volt appliance or a DC circuit. And when you push the button again, the circuit will turn off. Now this particular remote, I took the back off already, operates on 12 volts. Right over here, is a little opening you can see for a trimmer capacitor for adjusting the frequency you don't want to touch that right over here you can see this capacitor chip and that's where your antenna comes out now if you wanted to increase the range of this transmitter you could always cut away this trace to separate it from the antenna and then you could put your own external antenna sticking up now this is around 300 megahertz so you would want to use around an eighth wave antenna so it's not too big and that would be around 4.6 4.7 inches long you could just solder it to that point there and the antenna would stick out now if you just want to use the internal antenna like you see here the range is very good it's between 100 and 200 feet away from the receiver. Now you're not going to find a less expensive transmitter like this of this quality. So just make sure you look for this brand, V-O-Y-E, and look for one that looks just like this so you can duplicate exactly what I did. Now there's no reason to be playing around with the frequency that this transmits at. So when you get yours, you can leave it as is. But in the event that you did want to adjust, there's a little trimmer capacitor in that hole. Just take a small plastic screwdriver, rotate it slightly, and then you could push the button while you're adjusting the tunable inductor in the receiving end. Let's take a look at the receiver. Pop that off. It's already unscrewed. All right. Now this receiver here you can see the speaker, that's the battery bay, and it uses a 4069 integrated circuit, which is an inverter. Right here is the tunable inductor, that if you went to adjust the frequency in this one, you would have to make it match on this one. There's a little LED, it's a blue one. When the doorbell was triggered, the LED would illuminate with blue flashing, and also the sound would come out of the speaker. Now what I want to do is I want to eliminate the speaker, I want to eliminate the LED flashing, and I want this circuit only to do my on and off triggering for my 120 volt or DC circuits. Now before I get into how to convert this, if you wanted to increase the range, over here you have your tunable inductor in parallel with the capacitor as a tank circuit. You have your transistor right here you can see a line, a trace right back there. You could solder an antenna about 4.6 inches long right off of this connection and let it come out of the housing if you wanted to increase the range. You could do that too. So you could leave the one that's in here alone so it's nice and compact for your hand. But then what you could do on this one is add an antenna wire to increase the range. This particular receiver uses 3 volts, 2 double A's. If you don't want to use these batteries, you can switch to a wall transformer very easily. What I'm going to do is disable the entire sound portion of the circuit, the speaker with the sound chip and the up and down tune buttons and the volume buttons. I'm going to get rid of all that. Now in order to eliminate the whole sound portion of the circuit, we're going to take a look right over here this integrated circuit, 
the 4069. The power which drives the sound chip is coming from pin 8, which is an output of an inverter. When the button is not pressed on the remote, this remains low, 0 volts. And when you push the button on the remote and you hold it, it will remain high right at or near the battery voltage of 3 volts. So to disconnect the whole sound portion of the circuit, you see there's a little jumper wire right here, J1. You're going to cut that wire, and now pin 8 no longer supplies power to trigger the sound portion of the circuit. From pin 8, this wire right here where it's been cut will then be taken to a different circuit which I made, which I'll show you right now. All right, so right now I have the first circuit connected, which is the simple one, that when you push this button and you hold it, the circuit will remain on for as long as you're holding the button down. So we cut the jumper wire right here, which was being supplied by power from pin 8. Now you have to realize that the power coming off of this integrated circuit is very low current. So in order for us to use this, we're going to amplify it through the use of a transistor. So the pin 8 output will flow through a 2.7 to a 4.7K resistor into the base of a 2N3904 transistor. You could use a BC547, you can use a 2N4400, all of them should work fine. The emitter of the transistor connects to the battery negative, and the positive of the battery will go, in this case, to my anode of the LED, and the cathode of the LED will go to the collector of the transistor. Because this is 3 volts and the LED runs right around 3 volts, there is no need for a current limiting resistor for this demonstration. So now when I go to press this and hold, you'll see the LED come on. Alright, I'm holding it down. And you let go. Hold it down. So as long as the button on this remote is down, you're good to go. Now to control other circuits, AC or DC, you're going to need to install a relay just like you see here. But it's going to have to be a 3 volt relay. And also have the 5 pins like you see here. Alright, now this is the circuit. You have pin 8 through a 2.7K to a 4.7K. That's fine, that range. There's your transistor going to the base, emitter to ground. The collector goes to your relay coil, 3 volt relay. You have a back EMF diode, a 403 to 407. And then this right here goes to your 3 volt supply on the battery right here. Once the button is pressed on the remote, the relay will come on. And when you let go, the relay will go off. Now if you're looking to only control a DC load using this receiver you see here, and you're going to be handling a lot of current through that load, it might be a very good idea to swap out the transistor you see here, and you could also ditch the relay and everything else, and just connect up a logic MOSFET. Now you, the reason why you want to use a logic MOSFET is because the triggering voltage for the gate is very, very low, and the logic MOSFETs are designed to be triggered with a very low gate voltage. So that would allow the MOSFET to turn on fully, and you can control 10, 20, 30, 40 amps or more using that logic MOSFET. So for a DC application, you might just want to go with a logic MOSFET instead of the relay. For an alternating current application, your best bet is to stay with the 3 volt relay coil. Now before I move on to the next circuit, which is the latching circuit, I just wanted you to know what the current consumption is of the circuit you're viewing here. This entire circuit here only draws microamps when it's on standby, maybe 100 or 200 microamps. And if you have a relay here connected to control an AC load, once this is pushed and activated, that current will rise to 50 to 70 milliamps. So still a very low current draw. And like I said earlier, if you don't want to use the two double A's, you can, make a, you can use a wall transformer as well. Now I'm going to switch over to the other circuit, which is the latching circuit. 
All right, so now this circuit is now set up, and it draws around the same amount of current. When the relay is activated, you're looking 50 to 70 milliamps in that range, and on standby, around 200 microamps. When you push the button on the remote control, you see the light is on, and when you push it, it goes off. On, off. So it works extremely well if you want to have something latch on and latch off using this relay. You would remove the LED, like in the previous circuit, hook up a back EMF diode across the relay coil, and use the relay. Or, if you want to use a DC load, you could just use a logic MOSFET here as well to handle the high current load. Now the circuit you see being used right here, I have a video for on my video list. You would go to the search box under my videos and enter the search term latching and you will see this circuit come up. But I'll show you briefly right here what the circuit looks like. Now this has some modifications to it. It's made by Dave Johnson at discovercircuits.com. It's an excellent circuit. Go visit his website. Got a lot of interesting circuits there. Now there was a couple of problems. This is wrong. When you have your power supply coming in, it doesn't go to the source. You would have that go through your load, which is the relay coil with the back EMF diode, and that would flow into the drain, and then the source would go to ground. So we just make sure that correction is there. And I use a 2N7000, which works perfectly for this if you're going to control a relay with an AC load. If you would like to control a high current DC load, you could just replace this whole 2N7000 with a logic MOSFET instead and have the power supply flow through your load that you want to control into the drain and then the source of the logic MOSFET to ground. I replace this value right here, the 0.1 microfarads with a 0.05 or a 503. The 4.7 meg, I use a 5.1 with no problems. And the power supply at 3 volts works just fine. Now the way I got this to trigger on and off, I needed some sort of a switching to allow this wire to connect together. And the way I did that was using an optocoupler. Over here you can see the optocoupler that I used. This orange and red are the two wires that you would touch together normally to have the circuit go on latch, off latch, on latch, off latch. I connected that to the collector and emitter side of the optocoupler and I'm driving the optocoupler from pin 8's wire going through a 2.7 ohm resistor into the base of a 2N3904 transistor to amplify the current because the current coming off of the integrated circuit will not drive the internal LED on the optocoupler. So what you're going to have to do is this exact circuit you see right here, but you would replace this relay with your optocoupler. You would have the power coming in to the number one pin on the optocoupler and then the other pin for the internal LED would connect to the collector of the transistor and then I have a current limiting resistor over here a low value of around 27 ohms to limit the current flowing through the optocoupler. Now these two wires right here which go to the collector and emitter of the optocoupler you want to make sure you get extremely low resistance across that optocoupler and I would prefer you to actually overdrive the optocoupler at a higher current or at the highest current rating. You can go a little higher too because you're not going to be applying current to that optocoupler all the time. You're only going to intermittently apply current to that optocoupler just enough to get these two wires to get a very low resistance connection to be able to trigger the latching circuit. So don't get too concerned about the value of the resistor that's on the emitter side powering the optocoupler. Just make sure that there is something there, but it doesn't have to be that much because you are driving it at 3 volts. Right now your relay would have power and your circuit would be turned on. And when you push this again, it latches off, the relay would be off. On, off. So it's an excellent circuit. 
As you can see, it's very straightforward. It's a simple circuit to put together and to modify. And you could do the entire thing you see here for less than $10. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you.